Hey guys and welcome back to our next tutorial which will be about the Ventus configuration editor. The configuration editor of Ventus can be found in the Windows start menu or in the tools menu of the Ventus designer. Many hardware but also some network and renderer related options can be adjusted here. Ventus saves the configuration file on the machine rather than in the project directories. This way the configuration is project independent and it is possible to start a Ventus presentation without the need of changing the project settings first. This is the configuration editor start screen. You may change your machine identification here, like in our case VBOX PC, and your ID and group ID. These refer to renderer groups you may use to render with more than one machine. Over here you may change the machine you want to configure. Since I am in no local network only my machine is listed, but normally there will be every machine that is in your local network. Down here you can see the three sections of configurations you can adjust. You can extend those to see all your configurations you already saved. And over here you may create a new one, edit an existing one, copy it, rename it, delete it and export it or import a new one. So let's take a look at the different sections of our configuration editor. The first section is all about multi-touch remoting and has some miscellaneous other options. The second section is about audio and video. And the third section offers you an opportunity to configure the layout of your rendering. Let's take a look at the first section. Create a new configuration for this, name it tutorial and it will open automatically. In the first step you can basically change anything that has to do with interaction. So you can turn on and off Windows Touch as well as to you and adjust its default port that you want to use and the multicast address, which is by default your local network address. You can also change the behavior of the interactions inside render clusters. So when you use a video wall with a touch input, you should change the networking mode and the processing delay accordingly. Also, you can change the output scaling of the interaction nodes. So the input of a touch on the screen is pixel based, but Ventus doesn't use a pixel based metric system, but known. And so the touch nodes have to transfer the pixel based metric system to its own metric system. And when you change the window size of your presentation, the output will be changed as well. To prevent this from happening, you can simply check this option or adjust it manually by the scaling factor. So in the next step, you can change everything that has to do with remoting. You have several protocols over here, which you can adjust specifically which is always mostly about setting it on or off and setting the port that it has to use. Ventus uses Remoting 4 for the Ventus Director. Uh, therefore, it is not possible to enable or disable it or setting the port. In the next tab, you can find some miscellaneous options. For example, the culture settings. Here you can adjust your culture and your char sets that you want to use. So when you want to use Arabic letters, you will have to check this box first. Also, you can adjust some of the web browser settings here that you can use inside Ventus, like disabling the plugins or JavaScript, setting the language, the proxy server or the user agents. Also, you can change the process settings here like which priority the Ventus process has or which CPUs it should use preferably. Also, Ventus offers the opportunity to use the trackman tracking system and you can adjust its settings here. 
So let's take a look at the audio and video configuration section. In the first tab you can change your video input and output streams. To define one you will simply have to drag and drop it into the wanted stream. Then you can make some adjustments and when you're ready just click OK and you're done. In the next tab you can simply check which audio devices to use. Output as well as input devices are listed here. Ventus uses its own internal system to access audio streams. It has several virtual devices which have to be connected to the physical devices of Windows. So when you enable one of these audio devices, Ventus will automatically create a cross point for that device. When you don't want to use those automatically generated cross points, you can check the Use Custom Cross Points checkbox. Those cross points always contain a stereo input and a stereo output. Those are named from A to H, while A means the stereo input 1, 2, B is 3, 4 and so on. The same for the outputs. The last tab of this section is about mapping the different streams you have in Ventus to the two render pipelines. So we can not only define one video output stream but two and then we can map the different streams of our audio record or playback and so on to the different pipelines of the video outputs. In the last section of the configuration editor, you can change the render setup of the machine. Here you see a cluster with three machines, which always have three displays. So we have the machine of the first row, the second row and the third row, and the displays of them all. To create a new render setup, you will have to click this button over here. Here you can adjust some simple options like the displays per machine, the number of machines and the display resolution. But you can also adjust advanced options where you can additionally adjust the bezel or the overlap of all displays. So over here you have some self-explanatory options. And here you can change whether to show the machine borders. So when you offset one of the displays, you see this thick border over here. This means that only those two areas are visible through the displays, but the machine still has to render the whole area. So also this area which is not visible is rendered. This may decrease performance if you have too many of these areas. You may also show the render relations over here. You will always have to make sure that you have as many continuous render areas as possible since when you don't you will probably notice a decrease in performance. This closes our configuration editor tutorial. When you have more specific questions on different adjustments in this editor you may look it up in our user manual since this was only an overview. I hope I will see you in our next tutorial when we will talk about the Geometry Importer.